city council permissions. And every time there's a rezone or an annexation, uh, the city reaches out to all the different agencies, one of which is the school district. And I have yet to see the school district comment. The school district makes no comment. It doesn't matter what the project is, if it was 402 apartments going up on Beck the other day, and then there was 270 apartments going up on Beck yes, the, other, the other day, and there was no comment from the school district. And yet it's my understanding that the schools are funding, have funding problems. There's no school impact fee. So what are you as candidates, how are you gonna get the school district to step up? Because the school district person told me, well, we interact in other ways with the city. We work behind the scenes. I don't want behind the scenes. I want to see somebody standing up. So what are you going to do? Um, I think it's important that we uh, have an open communication with especially our city council. And uh, like uh, Josh was speaking earlier about, the, we have no access to the impact fees that are being levied on these uh, developers. It's all given to like parks and sidewalks, but yet our schools are horribly impacted by this growth. They're overcrowded and we don't have enough space for the students that we already have. I mean, our, our, our resources are already pretty tapped out, and here we are, you know, oh, sure, approve more, more, more kids, more kids, and we don't have the schools to put them well, in. Let me shortcut it. You all agree that you should be speaking? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so my second question is, then, kind of a follow-up on that, um, and, and maybe it's not a question. It is my impression that the people on the city council need to have citizens and agencies giving them a reason to vote no. Because they never get the school board coming up there and saying, yeah, don't approve all these apartments because we can't, we can't handle it. They don't get that reinforcement. All they have is wonderful Warren Wilson, our city attorney, who says, oh, please approve everything because we might get sued. And, and you spoke to him, and oh, that is his biggest fear in life, as near as I can tell, is our city attorney doesn't want to not approve everything. And I have been to myriad city council meetings and the, the staff planning reports, are they could be cookie cutter and they're always for approval. And the school district is always listed as didn't reply or neutral. So the school district has to step up. Somewhere in the school district, there's a broken. I wrote to the principal of Ponderosa Elementary over the Plummer Forest Products property. Now I don't know how many of you know Plummer Plumber Forest Products. Um, it's right off of Celtis. It's a big, right now it looks like a whole bunch of trees, but there's a wood factory in there. Um, and so you've seen the big three story apartment building that went up along the, so they wanted to put in another one of those. Okay, that went on the agenda. And then it was canceled. It was a, August 29th that was going to be voted on. And they canceled the, the hearing. But in that staff report, they said that the whole 60 acres should all be R3. 60 more acres of three-story apartments. And so I come back to you three now, and I say, Warren Wilson is going to be giving you cookie cutter staff reports and telling you, he's gonna to come to your, to your, oh, you're new folks, you were elected. You need to vote for these because Idahoans, everybody has a right to have the property what they want. Everybody has a right. They wanted R3, it should be R3. I know it's zoned low, um, low density uh, commercial. For example, here at um, uh, Cecil and Poline, right across from the high school. It's an eight and a half acre piece that somebody wanted to change from low commercial use to R3, okay? And that, was the first time I've ever seen a meeting that was three to three in the planning commission. So it's going to city council without an approval, but they want to make it R3. And, and Warren Wilson was adamant in that staff report that it had to be R3 because that was allowed. You can, if it's commercial, it can be R3, it's all equal. So how do you stand up to Warren Wilson? Because I'd like to hear you telling me you're gonna get rid of Warren Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to start with Kitty on this one here. When we get elected to city council, we have a job to do, and our job is to represent the citizens. So, 
as representing the citizens and what's doing best for Post Falls, that is what I'm going to do. And if someone comes across the desk and I don't think it's best for the citizens or the city together, I'm not going to vote yes for it. I'm going to vote it down. And if they want to sue, go ahead. I don't feel like I would work for Warren Wilson. Uh, you know, part of it is that I do understand that there's a process. Of, you know, we don't want to make decisions that are illegal that are going to make the city bear legal fees and, and burn and then lose. So, you know, there's part of that process that I, I'm sure that I will be more entrenched in as, as this goes along. But, um, you know, I just bought a house in, in Post Falls here a year ago, uh, and I want to build a shop in the back. So I called down to the city and asked him about, you know, variances and easements for how far the setbacks and, you know, all that stuff has to be. And it's very specific. This is what you're going to allow. And, this, you know, and so the argument about, well, it's my private property. I can do whatever I want to it really doesn't hold water when I call down to the city and I say, well, I want to build this shop. My neighbor's got one 10 feet from the property line. How come mine can't be 10 feet from the property line? And the, and the city planner says, well, eventually we might put sidewalks and swales through that area. And I said, there hasn't been sidewalks and swales in here. I mean, it's four, by the middle school. There's never going to be sidewalks and swales in there. But they're telling me that this is where I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to push my, my shop back to. So um, I am an advocate for private property rights. But, you know, you're also part of a larger community. And just because a private property owner gets connected with a developer and says, we, we want our three there, it doesn't. It doesn't um, force our hand to say, "Well, whatever you want." You know, that's my take on it. There, are, there are other guidelines that we have to go through and go by. Uh, but you know, I agree with Kenny. I work for the voters, all of you here that live here. You know, not some engineer and attorney that happens to be on staff in Post Falls. Josh, wanna add anything? Yeah, just that I agree with these guys. Uh, work for you guys, um, and just because a developer persuades or, or teams up with a, a landowner and wants R3 doesn't mean they can have it. I mean, yeah, we do what's best for the city and the community. So do we have some questions for the school board? Anybody? Come on up, please. Hi, my name is Naomi Betke. I'm a born and raised Idahoan. And I'm a homeschooling mom, but growing up, I went to public school, private school, and I was homeschooled, so I have a wide buffet of learning background. I recently, since I am a local, got very frustrated with what's been going on in the community. It's been very hard to watch. I remember when Molin to Celtics was nothing but prairie. And with the influx of people from out of town coming in and the different beliefs coming our direction, I decided to walk my neighborhood during the last election and hand out voting information for when they were doing the school levy. Most people in my zone had no idea what was going on. They had no idea, and a majority of them felt very similar <coughs> to how I felt about what was going on in the community. And I'm wondering if there is a way we can work with you as locals to get some kind of communication train going so that each of us can volunteer to contact X amount of individuals personally when you all have something important going on. Because people here, especially, it's not just natives. I have friends that have moved in because they love the values here too. We want to help, but we're so uninformed and Facebook just doesn't cut it. We need something more relational. And so yep. is there something that we can do we are willing to help and we're willing to serve you in your roles, but is there something that we can work out together where we can either get on a, like, I'll take my street, she'll take her street, or we get our neighbor's phone numbers and we let individuals know when you guys have something coming down the pike so that when we are building this level of protection to push back against what's coming our way, you guys are backed by us. Dave, why don't we start with you? Sure. No, absolutely. This has been something I've been thinking about a lot. Um, there's a lot of different strategies I think that we can use. For example, um, if we've got any policy changes that we want to implement or policies that have been implemented that we don't really want there, um, uh, I've been thinking about getting signatures from the citizens in particularly my zone 
uh, and being able to bring like a laundry list and slam them on the table and be like, this is what we want. We don't want what you're doing right now. We need to change it because everybody agrees. So we do need to get better at this. I mean, earlier this year, the school, there was a problem with the buses. I don't know if you're aware of this. Like it was, I think it was up in the golf course area. Uh, they didn't send enough buses uh, because the first week, there was one bus full of kids, and nobody, apparently, people who had just moved to the area, didn't know when the start date for school was. And they sent their kids out the next week, <laughs> and they needed three buses to get all of the kids. And they're standing there at the bus stop waiting for the buses. Parents are flipping out, they're calling the offices. There was no proper communication between the school district and the parents. When you go on the website, it's impossible to, to get your, your grievances aired, if you will. Um, I think that we could definitely bring a lot of transparency. I think we can make it very easy to get in touch with your uh, zone trustee, um, to be able to have like a comment box maybe that you just go on your website, plug it in, hit send, and it's there, right? Uh, the way that it is now, you have to go on the website, find an email, email everybody individually. Nobody even acknowledges that people are emailing them. Uh, there was a young woman named Amy at the last school board meeting who emailed every trustee and Dina, and none of them returned an email. None of them even acknowledged that she had written about mask mandates. And it's like, this is why we're angry. This is why we are very concerned. So absolutely, we need to be able to work together with the community. We need to build a coalition. We need to um, improve the ways that we communicate because Facebook, Twitter, all of it is manipulated. All of it is manipulated and is meant to drive us apart from one another. Right. And so we need to overcome that. And the only way to do that is in person. So. Yeah. Okay. The only thing I would add to what Dave said is uh, there are these school board meetings as well, just showing up in person to actually hear the events being discussed and the minutes are also put online. So there is that option as well, but fully agree with Dave as far as we need to work on a good system, an easy system that the citizens of Bulls Falls who wish to be part of the school board system, of our education system, can do so with ease. That they don't have to go through a bunch of red tape and uh, difficult user platforms, what have you, but a very solid form of communication. Because as school board trustees, our job is to represent the people. We can't do that if the people don't have contact with us and vice versa. Yeah. 